Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. So now let us come to our the continuation of uh, the lecture and now so what I have derived how to compute the derivative first order and second order with the help of uh, least square now I will show again very simple MATLAB code which I have shown similar MATLAB code for the computation of the the interpolation method so moving least square in uh, least square interpolation. So it is not much different from that. So anyway, we have to generate the grid and then we have to compute the neighbor. And once we compute the neighbor, then we just uh, invert this uh, this matrix. Uh, this uh, this is called in the least square. This M transpose W M is called like a normal normal matrix if you look the literature of the least square method so we just have to invert this uh, normal matrix and then we have to multiply the vector m transpose wmb with this inverse of this normal matrix so let us uh, see it is very simple it is not much difficult so in this sense so here i am taking uh, my my domain the 0 to 1, so my minimum x mean or a is equal to 0, and, uh, and then the b is or with the x max is 1. So I define my number of grid points, so I should take 40. So I define my delta x, it is somehow the distance between two grids. So here it is like an infinite difference, but uh, you, may, you may be wondering why I am doing a regular grid. But later I will show that I can generate the irregular grid and then uh, with this average decision delta x so that we get same resolution. So then I choose alpha, so at the moment 6, but we can vary later, we will see how different it will be. So the, here I generate the grid points. So next I will show you that I can generate the same as in the interpolation method. I can generate the very irregular grid points using the random number little bit perturbation using the random number in this uh, this part here with the regularity i just move minus side plus with some some factor of random number and then i consider the function where like here so just test that i am i want to do the second order approximation and just so we do the second order polynomial whether we get exact solution or not so then we'll test for the higher order polynomial also. First we start with the second order polynomial. So I want to take the derivative of x square plus x plus 1. So this is my, once I generate my grid, so this is the discrete value here, f of i or u of i. Now we compute first the derivative, the first order derivative here. So what we do that we run for all particle or grid 1 to n. So this is the initialization right at every point I have initially, so I don't have any neighbor. And then I run again for all. So this is, I am doing very expensive uh, method to, to compute the neighbor. So it is the order of any square because, so this is not the optimal one. So uh, once you are familiar with this one, then you just optimize your code finding the neighbor. So now here again, so I for every i, I run again another loop for j is equal to 1 to n in order to find the x i j which is the uh, which is the list yeah x i j which is the neighbor of x i so this x i j is a neighbor of x i point for the in the Taylor expansion there. So now here my x i j is nothing else. This is a list of n v. 
yeah so and then nv is total number of neighbor so it is just m in our and the lecture in the, on the board i have defined as a m but here is a nv it gives is a number of neighbor so in order to compute our normal matrix in the least square so we just have we need the dx, we need the w weight, and we need the right hand side vector v or b1. So here I have given v, but here it is v, b1. So now the first order, as you see that I have derived the first order is nothing else m transpose wb times inverse of that one. It means this expression divided by that expression. Therefore, we have to consider just to only find two sum. One is sum over dxj square, and one is sum over dxj times bj with the factor of weight. So now, this is the dxj square summation initialization. This is a dx times, uh, so this uh, numerator initialization. Now I run from 1 to m. So then what I get that my this ss, s, axx is a denominator. And I denote SUX as a numerator. So my derivative at point XI is this by this. So it is the first order derivative, this part divided by that part. And then now we know that uh, exact solution we know because I have given the explicit, uh, so, uh, so second order matrix. So X square plus X plus 1. So derivative of this one is 2 times X plus 1. So this is analytical one. And then we can compare at every point what is the numerical value and what is the analytical value here. So I'm just plotting the exact value and the numerical value ux here. So, and then finally I'm plotting the error between exact and numerical value. So let us see how I'm running. So how the solution looks like. So now here. So this is the blue line is the exact derivative, yeah, is a faster derivative, and this red O points are the numerical derivative. So you see here, if you look, so I just enlarge it. So on the boundary, I have little bit deviation from the exact solution. So this is the fact that I do not have much information on the left or I don't have much information on the right but when I am somewhere in between yeah middle of the domain so my our error is our our the solution of numerical solution is very close to the exact solution so if we look the error so very closely so if we look the error very closely so what we see that the error on the boundary on both sides is larger but here in the between it is very small so this is the first order derivative now let us see that if i have if i increase my resolution if i instead of 40 if i take 100 what will happen so here i have maximum 0 0.035 is the error so when i take the 100 so i should have smaller yeah so it is almost the half yeah so i have what I have taken that I have reduced. So if I just reduce by half, not just it was 40, I just make it half. Yeah. So if you want to do the convergence analysis, so now what you see that when I had n is equal to 40, my error, the maximum error was 0 0.036 or 35, let us say. So it is 0 0.018. So when I have 40, what I will have, my error was 0 0.036. And now I made the number of grid double. So it means I reduced the delta x by half. And what I got that my error is also reduced by half. So it means if you look somehow, I am not going to do that error analysis. If you do the error analysis, you get the first order convergence. Yeah. So if I reduce by, if I decrease uh, instead of 80, if I take 160, 
my error should be 0 0.09. Just now, let us check. So 160 is a double of 180. So with 80, I had 0 0.018. So now I hope with 160, I should get 0 0.09, something like that. Yeah, so here you see, I get 0. It is just half of that. So it means our approximation, since I have the first order approximation, it gives us that first order convergence. So this is if you want to do some type of convergence analysis. So I am not going to do that. So maybe the next in the in the next lecture we can do. So this is the convergence of first order. Now let us check what will happen with the irregular git. So whether I get similar convergence order or not. So let us start with 40 points. Yeah. So I will plot also x and 0. So x is also, so again one more, so this is my grid is very irregular, yeah, so my error is larger than of course because you cannot expect with this 40, number of point 40, so our error was 0 0.036, so it is something like 0 0.055. So with this very, very irregular grid, we got little bit worse error, little bit larger error. So it was before 0 0.0, 0 0.036, now it is 0 0.055, so almost 1, 1 1.5 times larger. So here, the blue line is the exact first order derivative, and these red points are the numerical approximation of first order derivative. Let us check whether we get the first order convergence. So it means now if I increase my number of grid points from 40 to 80, my error should be so half of 0 0.055. Let us check whether we get that. So half of 0 0.055, it should be like 0 0.027 or 0 0.028. So let us check here. So I got even better than first order because now it is 0 0.0 less than 0 0.02. So I was expecting 0 0.027 or 0 0.028. Now we got uh, something like 0 0.02. So again, if I go to 160 here, so what we see that we should get uh, smaller than 0 0.02. We expect it like 0 0.01. Yeah, so here we get something like 0 0.01. So for 40, we had 0 0.055. For 80, we had 0 0.02. So we are expecting 0 0.27, yeah? Because it is depending upon the random seed. So the seed is always randomly chosen. So next time I will get maybe a little bit smaller or a little bit larger. And then when I had 0 0.40, 0 0.027 or 0 0.02, when I have now 160, it is 0.012. So again, reduced by the error. Once I reduce the size by half and I reduce the, uh, the error also by half. So either in regular grid or in irregular grid, what do we get that we get first order convergence since our approximation is also the first order. And now, if now you see that if I choose now take another run, so I will have another random number, I will not expect exactly the same error bar here. So it was here maximum 0 0.014. So maybe next time it may be, yeah, it is here 0 0.014 here, a little bit larger on the boundary. So again, if I run next time, 
So I will get exact, not exactly the same. I will get again different curve. Yeah. So this is so here like 0 0.012 is better than that. So this is due to the generation of random number. So it is nothing else. So we can create a grid which are not changing with the time or with the seed of the computer uh, computer seed. So we can fix the seeds there so that we get always same same random number. Then we can fix the if we do the convergence, we should not use the variable seed. We should use the fixed seed so that we get always same fixed random number and then we can do the convergence analysis. Now let us go to the second order. So what will happen now? So first order, we got first order convergence. So now I'll go to the second order. I start with the very regular grid. As suppose that with the first order approximation, what we had that we had the approximation of the derivative was the first order convergence and now I am doing the second order. So for the second order, let us take that, I just take the first order derivative. We should get much smaller error and we should get second order convergence. Let us see here. So I am doing everything same, nothing different, so same function. So instead of one by one matrix here, I am having now two by two matrix, symmetric matrix. So I am computing the right hand side, the, the derivative A, which is fx and fxx with this matrix. Yeah, solving this linear system, m transpose wm times a is equal to m transpose wb. So now here what I am doing again, so I am searching the neighbor. I am just getting ready with all the geometrical information what I need for computing m transpose wm. And then I have to now construct this matrix. This one, there are three summation. One is uh, summation over dx square, another is summation over dx cube, and another one is summation over dx3. And then on the right hand side is summation over the difference of function value times dx, and the second one is summation over difference of function value times b. So once I compute all these three components, because it is symmetric matrix, I have to compute only one, two, three, because this is the same. And then I can, I can just write the, our matrix A is equal to A is equal to S A A S A X X S A X X three and S A X X three S A X X four and then my this is the right hand side vector B or you can write R for example because B we have already taken B one there so not to confuse. So let me write it R and then so it is my solution is A minus A black this is the MATLAB command for solving linear system. So I get my foster derivative A is equal to D1 or here in this computation which is the apex and then the second A2 or D2 here this is my UXXI and then so I have my exact solution. 2x plus 1, and then just let us take, compare with the first order, you remember what we had the first order approximation. Now I am running, you remember that when I had a first order approximation with this 40 number of grid point, yeah, so my error was 0 0.036, but now I am having second order approximation, so I have done the stellar expansion of the second order. My, the error of my first order approximation is 4 point times 5 times 10 to the power minus 13. So it is very accurate. So it is unbelievable what you have seen. So here also on the boundary, you know, the first order approximation, I have got little bit error here, but now it is very small, it is almost zero here. So this is now my 
approximation is 4.5 times 10 to the power minus 13. So if I increase my, I make my delta x half, so I just increase my number of neighbor, a total number of grid from n to 2n. So I should have my error also by factor 4 if I want to have my second order convergence. So in 2 into 1d is half, yeah, it's a factor, it should be factor half. So now here I get, so because you cannot get exactly this 10 to the power minus 12 or minus 15 are very small because the generation, my random number distribution is, it is entirely different. So next time when I run here, instead of 1.8 times 10 to the power minus 3, 12, I may get another number. So 1.10 times 8 times 10 to the minus again similar, but here I may get yeah is more or less same. So now let us make 180, 160. So I should get even smaller. So instead of 1.8 times 10 to the minus 12, so I get yeah it is here very less here down, but here in some point I got little bit. I got a little bit uh, smaller. Anyway, this value is always small enough. Let us do with the irregular grid here. What will I? What will happen? So I consider irregular grid here and plot again the irregular grid. So sorry, here yeah, the error was that I have taken the, I have plotted the error of, I have plotted the error of second order and the first order, yeah. So let, so it was my small mistake. So let me comment, uncomment the plotting of first order and second order here. So we start with 40 here. So the irregular grid. So my solution is uh, looks very bad here, not good. So let us take a little bit more. Maybe 40 was very, very less, very small. Something went wrong here with the with the irregular grid here. Let us take first the second order derivative here. So second order derivative of this function is x square plus x plus one is two. So let us do it. So let us compute, there's, let us plot the second order derivative, we should get 2 here. The error between these two. So this was already the so now you see the second order derivative of this quadratic function, what I have taken, x square plus x plus 1, this is 2, we get exactly 2. So even with the 40 points, we should get exactly 2. So with the 40 points also, we are getting, so error, very small, 10 to the power minus 15. So we are getting the second order derivative also very accurately. Now, let us see what is happening with the irregular grid. So I was supposed to get this, I don't know, maybe I have to increase my edge here. Let us increase my edge. It was due to the edge here. Something went very wrong. So, 
there is because so one has to be very careful that when you generate the irregular grid yeah so you cannot generate the irregular grid something like which are much far from from your center point yeah your neighbor should not be that much far so it means that what I had told in the beginning in the first lecture that we have some technical aspect of uh, our mastery method when we do the simulation then what we get that uh, we have this is our fully Lagrangian method it means the particle move with their velocity and once they move either the cluster they all sit at one point or they scatter so that they make the hole in the domain so if they all are clustering at one point what will happen so then some points are far away and you don't find the neighbor which are the neighbor all neighbor are only in the center at your center point so that case what will happen that our denominator so in this uh, least square matrix that one will be zero because all the dxj is zero it means we get singularity of that matrix M transpose WM. Either this is a first order or it is a second order also. If all dxj is zero, we get M transpose WM. So matrix is a singular. It means that we have to be very careful. It means that in the flow simulation, what we do is that if the point are clustering, all are sitting together, it are very, very close, we remove one of them. Or if they are scattering far away, so we add some new point so that we maintain our particle distribution or grid distribution more or less with the size of delta x but it not exactly distance with the delta x. So here we see that effect that if my generation of grid point is a little bit worse for example. So if it is like here if I made little bit worse so distribution so here what you see that so let me make more visual so it is uh, minus 1 so let me more visible sorry it is 0 to 1 but here i just make minus 1 to one let's check so what you see is that you see this point is this is very far so we i may not get the nice if i should have always a very good number of neighbor these two points are very close here almost so we don't need that that is also bad but these two points are far if i am looking the neighbor of this point so this point is far away and that is still far that is even far so it is the same happening here. So that is the generation of grid point. Therefore, I was getting large error. Yeah, my derivative was almost. So this is my exact solution, and this is my numerical solution. But in the first order, if I am having the first order approximation, there I don't need the influence of far more points. So here. So what I have, if I have the first order approximation, let us say with the same, I am having better resolution. So you see, if I have the first order approximation here, yeah, if I have my first order approximation here, what do we get? I get better, better resolution, a little smaller error than the second order because the reason is that for the second order you have the Taylor expansion you need more grid so due to this bad number of neighbor yeah this is very the neighbor which is very far then we are not getting the correct uh, or we are not getting a smaller error now again so what we can do that I do a little bit different of the generation of the grid point instead of this one what I can do is that I just make instead of this minus or plus so I just do a little bit with the positive from my side just I add smaller distance with the random factor so here I get a better solution so 
my numerical solution, still I have a little bit irregular point, so I can make even it is a little bit larger. So I am getting very close solution. So if I take a little bit larger deviation from the random number, so I still get good solution. Yeah, it is not so bad. So now you have to be very careful that in order to get the correct good approximation of derivative in the irregular grid. So here generating random number was just my example. So that will not happen because uh, we always regulate, we always do the particle management such that we will not have such a bad distribution of point. So in our then we will have the stable solution. So we can do the same way what I have written the interpolation here. Let me do that uh, interpolation if I compute derivative like that. And then finally, what I do that I just take my interpolation. Now I am getting the correct and the error is much smaller than which I have presented uh, the, in the earlier the first method. Yeah? But with the mobile square method, we are getting fantastic, very small error. So now we are ready for the computation of derivative. Now we should start the computation of partial differential equation depending upon time and space. So wait for the next lecture. Thank you.